Tara Reid, President Joe Biden's former Senate aide who accused him of sexual assault, is pushing for a full investigation into the president over her allegations, as well as Hunter Biden's laptop. That's according to Newsmax. Here's Joe Biden's response to the assault allegations when asked about it on MSNBC back in May of 2020. She says in 1993, Mr. Vice President, that you pinned her against the wall and reached under her clothing and penetrated her with your fingers. Would you please go on the record with the American people? Did you sexually assault Tara Reid? No, it is not true. I'm saying unequivocally, it never, never happened. And it didn't. It never happened. According to the Daily Caller, the Department of Justice has issued a subpoena probing Twitter for information on Reid's accounts in the months after she accused Biden of assault. Meanwhile, House Democrats' new leader, Hakeem Jeffries, is making headlines following new call, the new calls for an investigation. In April of 2020, Jeffries broke with the Democratic Party when he said Reid's claims against the then presidential candidate should, quote, uh, should be, quote, investigated seriously. So, you know, there are a couple of things here. One, the fact, I mean, we, you know, we say he broke with the Democratic Party, but there were some people at the time, from the moment that Joe Biden uh, announced his campaign, and I believe there were eight accusations made against him at the beginning of the, of the primary season, a number of Democratic politicians, including his own now VP, so that women should be believed and these things should be investigated. But by the time the Tara Reid allegations came out, Biden had all but won the Democratic primary, and the tone shifted dramatically, such that, you know, none of us obviously know exactly what happened except for Tara Reid and Joe Biden. But the fact that there was absolutely zero interest in investigating this at all, mainstream media wouldn't touch it. I believe the only real substantive interview that um, Tara Reid got was with Megyn Kelly. And of mm -hmm. course, that was looked at askance because of Megyn Pe Kelly's own politics. But she had nowhere else to go. Uh, there was a strong contrast between how Tara Reid was treated and how um, Christine Blasey Ford was treated, even though I would argue that there was more contemporaneous corroborating evidence for Tara Reid. Her mother had called in in the 90s to the Larry King show and talked about what had happened to her. You know, long before there was any, you could argue there was any kind of political motive for her to want to be bringing these things up. And yet the mainstream media, the liberal media, had absolutely no interest in following up on the story. So these two parts of it now, the Hakeem Jeffries comment being dragged back up because he is now House minority leader feels like an admission that he's going to have to reckon with. And secondly, this question about whether or not there's anything in the Twitter files that indicates that she might have been treated poorly, suppressed, et cetera, um, to advantage the Democratic Party, the same way the Hunter laptop story was suppressed to advantage the Democratic Party. Yeah, with this one, it's really, it all falls apart in the comparisons to other cases. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not sure I think how this was handled, the, the Tara Reid accusation was handled, is necessarily wrong. It is just such an outlier compared to everything else, including Christine Blasey Ford. It, it is an outlier. It, it is wildly out of accordance with, which, with what so many Democratic and progressive people say about how sexual assault accusations should be handled. It is wildly out of step with how Joe Biden said sexual assault allegations should be handled. He has said, almost direct quote, there should be, when a woman comes forward, she should be believed. Um, it, it should be almost automatic and presumptive that she's telling the truth. This is, and many people point out how unsustainable this is, not because people, I don't think that people are especially likely to lie about this. People just lie in general. It's not that women lie, it's just that people lie, or people misremember, or they exaggerate, or they make themselves out to be differently in stories, where stories change over time. We all know that happens. We all know how slippery memories are. So to have the standard of automatic belief just doesn't, it, it, it's not workable. And I right. think he's seeing why it's not well, look, workable. It's, I think that there's a perfectly fine to have like a rebuttable presumption. The, the believe women stuff, I think, is an overstatement. But it's a response to the fact that there was a categorical don't believe women. That was the, the norm before right. that. Definitely wrong. And, and my issue, I think we agree, it's the complete and total lack of interest in any mm -hmm. kind of investigation. When again, okay, memories can be faulty, et cetera, et cetera. In this case, there was a neighbor that she talked to at the time. There was this Larry King interview. There were so many moments that were contemporaneous or near contemporaneous that frankly didn't exist in a lot of other cases, including Christine Blasey Ford. And for that to be completely ignored, moreover, a lot of people who were actually very involved in the Me Too movement, people like um, Alyssa Milano, who were associated with Time Up mm -hmm. and these big orgs that were fueled by the Me Too movement, 
when the Joe Biden accusation, when the Tarveed accusations came along, she literally started a podcast and had Joe Biden on as her first guest to talk about how wonderful he was for women's interests, completely throwing all of their values and yeah. stated beliefs under the bus immediately. And one of the most craven political about faces that I've ever seen in my entire life. They had people like Stacey Abrams on TV looking shell-shocked, having to run cover for Biden. All of these Democratic women were put on TV after having said all of this stuff over the past two years or so with the Kavanaugh hearings and made to defend Joe Biden immediately, not doing what right. Kim Jeffries said, which is, well, of course, we need to investigate All the this. same people who said that Kavanaugh was, is all but a confirmed rapist. There's a confirmed rapist on the Supreme Court now. And look, and I don't, I think, obviously, I didn't vote for Joe Biden. I think if I was inclined to vote for Joe Biden, <laughs> um, I don't think this accusation would have changed my mind. It, it was a long time ago, and there was not enough uh, the overwhelming amount of evidence there would need to be for me to really think there's a high degree of likelihood this happened and this is going to change my vote, it wouldn't have had any effect. But I would have said the same for confirming uh, Justice Kavanaugh. I mean, in both of these cases, I, it's their actual policies that matter to me more than anything else. But it, it was the same kind of, look, maybe this happened. I, with all due respect to the people who brought forth these accusations, it, it's, not, it's not to malign them or say that they're dishonest people or to say that they don't, or that they don't believe something real or that it didn't ha I don't know. Uh, it, it's just hard to adjudicate things from a long time ago without a lot of uh, evidence, reliability, et cetera. It's very difficult. Uh, it's ultimately up to up to voters, or I guess indirectly voters in the Kavanaugh case. Well, that's the problem. The question is here, was it left up to voters, or was there a thumb put on the scale, right. not just be the, the people The media did not talk about it. it. But in, in the any, Twitter files, any, are we going to find yeah. out? You know, and we obviously know this is speculation and speculation on the part of Tara Reid as well. But like, is there is there going to be evidence about how this that particular situation was handled? I know that you know on the Bernie campaign, at the time, at the very last days, we were instructed not to touch it with a ten foot pole. And you know, people can debate really? the wisdom of that kind of decision. No, I didn't say a word about it. Couldn't tweet about it. Couldn't express an opinion about it. That's until wild. After Bernie dropped out of the race, you would th think that would be a good art, like. We've got two two, uh, two candidates. One does, regardless of their if it's true or not, one is not tainted even by false accusations. That yeah, well, is an advantage in picking a candidate, presumably. And one argument is, if you're going to go up against Trump, and one of the terrible things about Trump, and people want to hit him over, is all of the sexual assault allegations. Don't you want a president running against him who has a clean bill of health in mm -hmm. that regard? Joe Biden didn't, but. I think a lot of folks don't even know that there were all of these allegations in the beginning to, to Joe Biden that not just Kim Jeffries, but Kamala Harris and others said that they believed the women that had accused him. A lesser, lesser, less, less, um, uh, a, you know, significant kinds of assault than the one Tari's accusing him of, you know, more of the hair sniffing, right, the adding, touching, the, yeah, touch, you know, yeah. th those kinds of things, but they existed. Um, and for me, this was, my, I was never going to vote for Joe Biden, but for me, this was less an indictment of, um, how I felt about Joe Biden as a person than the colossal disappointment that I had with the Democratic Party for being so clearly, transparently only invested in these principles that it holds over the Republican Party's head only as so far as it um, supports their own candidate. And I, I say the same thing about Herschel Walker and all of these evangelicals and conservatives who say they care about values and life and stuff, not caring if Herschel Walker um, pays for abortions. You know, all of it I find to be really disgusting. You, you can have your hypocrisy, you can prioritize your policy, but don't at the same time do all of this hand-wringing about your morality. Well, and one other aspect of this hypocrisy that I always need to point out is that um, under the due process rules that the Biden, uh, the Obama administration pushed and then were briefly pulled back during the Trump administration and are now being reimposed on college campuses by the Biden administration. Uh, the Tara Reid accusation, if Biden were a college student under the policies his own administration supports, he would absolutely be convicted and thrown off campus, it, or, or, or could be, depending on how things, mm. it would be absolutely enough to decide he is responsible for sexual misconduct and should be expelled. But. Well, the rules for thee are not the rules for me is generally how it goes. Well, that's all for us today. Make sure to tune in tomorrow for our Best of Rising, where we bring back some of our most popular segments from the week. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss any content. And for those of you who prefer to listen while on the go, we are now available anywhere you listen to podcasts. That's anywhere you listen to podcasts. You can also catch us daily on Roku, Vizio, Plex TV, Local Now, and uh, on thehill.com. So many places, so many options, no excuses not to tune in. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.